Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is Death Stranding with maxed out settings at 60 FPS running on a Chromebook, which is pretty ridiculous actually, but it's running with GeForce Now. So this is actually being streamed from the cloud. This is how streaming <laughs> works. Um, uh, but it's pretty crazy, because obviously normally for this kind of thing, you're gonna need a high-end laptop, a high-end gaming laptop. So the question is, What's GeForce Now like on a Chromebook? How's it compared to a you know, traditional laptop experience? And should you actually subscribe to this? So I'm sure you guys know what a Chromebook is, but basically they run Chrome OS, which means nearly everything you do is online or in the cloud. But importantly, most of these laptops are pretty affordable. This new ASUS model is about 550 pounds, which is one of the more upper mid-range models, whereas this HP is around 450 but they're ideal for students, or if you just want a nice thin and light laptop that doesn't break the bank. And people seem to love a Chromebook. Sales of these have actually quadrupled in the last year. So if you are thinking about getting a Chromebook, or maybe you already have one that does meet the minimum spec, or just a creaky old regular laptop, and importantly, you have decent connection speeds, then Nvidia's GeForce Now is a good option for gaming with high graphic settings at 60 FPS, which otherwise just wouldn't be possible on a low power device like this. And better yet, on Chromebook, you don't even need the app installed. You log in and play direct through the Chrome browser. However, Windows 10 PCs or Macs still need to use the regular standalone app for now. So what exactly are the main benefits of game streaming? Well, firstly, it means you can play games on something with potato specs like this. Also, the games are installed in seconds and you never have to worry about patches or updates. Plus, if you are buying a cheaper laptop that maybe doesn't have a ton of storage, you don't actually install any of the games locally onto it, so you're not using up any of your hard drive space. And of course, because we're not actually using the hardware in here to play the games, it never gets too hot or, uh, you know, it doesn't use the battery life, which is pretty uh, important, especially if you are taking this to class afterwards. And with a good connection, games look and play great on this, although I emphasize the word good, which we'll come back to in a second. But for me, it's not quite a gaming laptop replacement because you do have to deal with uh, latency. The graphics aren't quite as good, so sometimes you get compression issues. And of course, with gaming laptops, you may get benefits like high refresh rates or lower response times or other gaming related features. So with GeForce Now, there's a free tier which limits you to just one hour play sessions, but it's a good way to see if this works for you before you sign up to the £5 or $5 a month founders tier subscription, which then extends your playtime to six hours per session, and also adds ray trace graphics and supported games, and gives you priority server access. So if you think about five pounds a month, that's uh, 60 pounds a year, uh, so then say over five years, which maybe is a console cycle, then that's about 300 pounds. So that's still cheaper than a console, but then you do also have to buy the games, but then you do with the console as well and also they upgrade the hardware themselves in the cloud, so you're not gonna have to buy a new graphics card just to keep up with the new games, because uh, they upgrade their supercomputers in their server centers, wherever they are in the world. And the fact that it is a subscription service means you can just you know, cancel it whenever, there's no massive payment needed at the start like you would with a games console or a gaming PC like that. Now you could be forgiven for lumping GeForce Now in with other game streaming options like Google Stadia and Microsoft's Project X Cloud. And as with those, it's helpful to think of GeForce Now as being your own powerful PC slash console in the cloud, which actually runs the game and then streams it via your internet connection to your device. But Nvidia have done things a little bit differently because instead of having a game store like Stadia, GeForce Now lets you stream the games you already own by linking it with your existing game libraries. Although this is limited to Steam, Epic, and Uplay for now. But this is a big deal because it means you don't have to rebuy the games you already own or pay over the odds for them like you often have to do with Stadia. And there's some free to play games like Apex Legends. But the problem is it doesn't support all your games from those libraries. Nvidia reckon there's about 650 right now with new titles added weekly, but some big names like Red Dead Redemption 2 or the latest Call of Duty are missing. Worse still, titles sometimes disappear from the service as publishers decide to pull their catalogs. Also, finding games can be a bit of a pain. More often than not, I have to search for them by name, even when I've linked my libraries to my account. So that's the setup, but what's it actually like to play games on a Chromebook with GeForce Now? Well, in the right circumstances, it can be fantastic, but it lives or dies by your connection speed and crucially how stable it is. Image quality and input lag can vary a lot depending on your connection speed. And if your connection is sometimes unreliable, this can result in stutters, artifacting, or just full-on freezing. Now, Nvidia recommends a wired Ethernet connection and a 50 megabit down connection for 720p at 60fps or 25 megabits per second for 1080p 60. 
But in my testing, it was the reliability of the connection and of your Wi-Fi that makes the biggest difference. All right, so we're in Wolfenstein Youngblood. My internet at home is about 70 megabits per second down over Wi-Fi, which is pretty good actually, way above the recommended. I don't know, sometimes it works really, really well, but then sometimes it kind of falls over itself. So I'm playing Wolfenstein here and actually right, oh, oh. That's a good example of it. Sometimes it's really, really fluid and fast and then it kind of just trips up a little bit. Uh, so this is actually at the very, very high mind leave and graphic settings, which obviously it's not something you'd normally do on a Chromebook. Okay, so this time, as you guys can see, we have it connected via the ethernet and actually straight away that has made a difference. What a world of difference that makes. So it shows that my internet speed is fine. 70 is more than enough. This is awesome. This is like, this feels just like playing on my full desktop PC. And we're still looking at 70 FPS with absolute maxed out settings. Although of course we still a 60 Hertz screen, so that tops out there, but this is awesome. Come back later, I wanna keep playing. So that's beautifully smooth. So if we take out the wired connection, okay, we're back in. Surprisingly, it's, uh, it's actually playing really well. So you can see it really is all about the consistency of your connection. I've not done anything other than go from Wi-Fi to wired to Wi-Fi. This is obviously playing better now, but it just wasn't before. So whether you've got someone else in the house, you know, downloading Netflix or, you know, playing something or using the bandwidth. Now, one of the big questions for me is how is the GeForce Now experience on the Chromebook compared to a traditional proper laptop? And straight away, I am noticing the compression and some artifacting with the GeForce Now. As I say, we do have this red signal. I've restarted it, done everything I can. We have the wired connection, but yeah, it's a little inconsistent as you can see. So the latency from the input lag doesn't seem to be a major issue. It's pretty neck and neck, to be honest. It all comes down to that connection, how stable it is. And also, of course, whether you get the recommended speed. The actual gaming laptop is a lot nicer. And part of the reason for that is this particular one has a high refresh rate, which is pretty common with gaming laptops. This is 144 Hertz. While we do have all the downsides or the cons of a gaming laptop, we do get some of the benefits, including high refresh rates, perhaps lower response time displays as well. So that does make a difference if you're an enthusiast gamer. But at the same time, if you can hear from my mic, the fan is whirring away on the Asus laptop, whereas this is completely silent and also completely cool. So you're not really draining the battery, you're not overheating. And so there really are pros and cons to each setup. But I think rather than one being better than the other, it's just another way of playing and not everyone can afford a gaming laptop, not everyone wants to carry one around with them all the time. It's not as good in terms of a raw gaming experience, but it's pretty damn close, assuming you have a good connection. Now I actually have another Chromebook here with me. This one's from HP, but this actually has four gigs of RAM and NVIDIA recommends uh, for their recommended specs of GeForce Now, eight gigabytes. Actually, I found it to be as consistent slash as inconsistent as this Asus one with eight gigs of RAM. So while you are gonna need a Chromebook from the last couple of years, really, it needs to be a fairly modern one. In terms of the four versus eight gigabyte options here, I didn't notice a ton of difference, actually. Really, it all comes down to that connection and the bandwidth. So overall then, I think GeForce Now is a really good alternative to a proper gaming laptop or PC. As I say, I don't think it's gonna replace it, and there are problems with this, and it all really comes down to your connection. If you uh, have an amazing connection, then you're gonna love this. If you don't, you're probably gonna hate it. And that's why I think their free trial subscription is actually really, really handy. Give it a go, see what your experience is with your setup, and then maybe you know look at subscribing to the proper Founders Edition. Plus, as I mentioned earlier, it's always improving. So unlike a traditional PC setup, up where you may have to buy a new graphics card every couple of years or upgrade the RAM. NVIDIA does all that behind the scenes anyway. So while they haven't confirmed it, it's pretty likely that they're gonna upgrade all their servers to the new Ampere graphics cards. And that'll mean you get the best graphic settings, you know, the highest frame rates at the highest resolutions. So it's only gonna get better. And of course, you're just paying for one subscription a month. So I think it's a pretty good deal, actually. It's not gonna be for everyone. If you already have a gaming laptop, then you don't need it. But if you are thinking of buying something as basic as a Chromebook or indeed any other laptop, the reason I'm making this video now is because it's finally become actually optimized for Chromebooks. But 
but this all still works on Macs and PCs. I think GeForce Now is definitely worth considering, but what I would like to do, and let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see this, uh, but a proper comparison between Project X Cloud, uh, Google Stadia, you know, GeForce Now, maybe even Shadow. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you have used GeForce Now yourself, then let me know in the comments below uh, what your experience is so that, well, I can get an idea of it and also other people if they're thinking of giving it a try. So let me know in the comments below. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and help me get to that one million subscriber mark. That's all I ask for, just your comments and your subscriptions, uh, and that would be amazing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.